Well, let's pray together. <clears throat> Father, we thank you for this time where we can come and hear you speak, and we pray that by the power of your Spirit you would do that, that you would uh, touch our lives, encourage us as we seek to grow in you. And we ask this in your name, Lord Jesus. Amen. <clears throat> Well, you won't believe this, but uh, this past week for devotions, I was reading the session minutes from 2010 to the present. How many have done that? Oh, only one person, but she's a stated clerk. No one else should do that. But six years ago, 2011, this is what I discovered. September, six years ago. We see our mission is to know Christ and to make him known. There are two wins, people experiencing intimacy with Jesus and drawing people into the community in Christ. Our strategy is to help people become inwardly strong in Jesus so that they can be outwardly focused in mission. How we get there is through worship, scripture, prayer, discipleship, small groups, mission trips, evangelism, etc., etc. We value growing in Christ, trusting the Holy Spirit, and connecting in community. The one critical success factor is our ability to articulate our vision with three values. Growing in Christ, trusting in the Holy Spirit, connecting in community through God's love. Pull this out. Six years ago, if you've got a bulletin, <clears throat> there you'll see the three boxes, and they're from our current mission study, and they're the similar values, growing in Christ, connecting in community, and reaching out in mission, either side, you get those three values. So over the next uh, three months, we're going to consider each of these values a month at a time. <clears throat> and we desire that you internalize them. And internalize means that you will encounter the living God, are healed and transformed by the Holy Spirit, and equipped to take the message of Christ out into our community and into the world. And so today we're starting with the first a value, which is growing in Christ. How many of you knew that Jesus grew spiritually? You all knew he grew physically because he started out as a baby. But in Luke chapter 2 and verse 52, we read this, and this is from the Phillips. Jesus continued to grow in body and mind. He grew also in the love of God and those who knew him. Spiritual growth. Now, the three values grew out of our mission statement. How many of you know our mission statement? Raise your hand. How many would like to know it? <laughs> you know, every good mission statement should be brief, right? Ours is brief and easy to remember. Can I? Oh, yeah. To know Christ and to make him known. Now, I want us all to say it together to know Christ and to make him known. Now that should be your mantra when you get up every morning. My mission is to know Christ and to make him known. Great mission statement, easy to remember, right? Okay, without me leading, what's the mission statement? To know Christ and make him known. Oh good, we're off and running. All right. <clears throat> Now, like all journeys, and that includes our journey in growing in Christ, we have to start somewhere. Our journey as Christians begins by placing our trust in the resurrected living Christ. There's this movement from walking on the human journey without Christ to believing in Jesus and then getting on this different journey. Now, growing in Christ may mean for some moving away from being a Christian in name only. Those are called nominal Christians, making a move. Beginning the journey with Christ can occur 
suddenly, like it did for me, or it may occur over time if you've been raised in the church. But until we place our trust in Christ and what he has done on the cross to make us friends with God, can we start growing in Christ? No. How many of you have uh, traveled overseas? To start that journey, you had to buy a ticket. <laughs> Committing yourself to Jesus Christ is that beginning, buying the ticket, getting on board. Now, the journey in Christ begins like all human journeys as babies in Christ, with milk to help us grow and to move on to maturity. These two images actually occur in the Bible. We're going to see two verses. <clears throat> the first one is 1 Corinthians uh, 3, 1 and 2, and this is from <clears throat> the Phillips. I, brothers and sisters, was unable to talk to you as spiritual people. I had to talk to you as unspiritual, as yet babies in the Christian life. And my practice has been to feed you, as it were, with milk, and not with meat. You were unable to digest meat in those days, and I don't believe you can do it now, <laughs> for you are still unspiritual. Now the second passage is from Hebrews uh, chapter 5, uh, verses uh, 12 through 14, and I've sort of edited them to put them together. I find you need someone to go over the basics of God again. Starting from square one, baby milk, when you should have been on solid food long ago. Milk is for beginners, inexperienced with God's ways. Solid food is for the mature. Now both of these passages show us that followers of Jesus are at different places or different stages in their personal journey with Jesus Christ. So in order to grow we need to sort of figure out where we are in our life with Christ. Are we a child needing milk? Are we an adolescent or more mature, ready for the solid meat of Bible study and theology, uh, going to a course that's going on right now on the Reformation, you know, church history, or spiritual formation? Now, when I became a Christian, <clears throat> I was biblically, theologically, and ethically ignorant. I was an infant in the faith. Now, if my youth pastor had said, Kent, I want you to start by reading the book of Revelation, would that have been good? <laughs> no. <laughs> if you know anything about the book of Revelation, you don't start there. See, I was an infant. It would have been like having prime rib instead of a bottle of milk. <clears throat> I needed milk. I needed simple things. As some of you who have had children will remember feeding them those little bottles with, if you bottle fed, uh, two or three ounces. I did that for ours. And uh, I learned this week from Dr. Alex Bootson the word, and it should show up here, Colostrum. How many, apart from nurses and doctors, know what colostrum is? <laughs> uh, good, many of you. I didn't. Uh, it's a form of milk. Now, I've been hearing that word for the last four weeks with my calf here, Porter. We kept talking about he needed milk for colostrum, and I go, hmm, what's that? There he is. He loves milk. He's down to one sort of half gallon now. Isn't he, isn't he great? But he needed the colostrum when he was the little guy almost dead. You see, colostrum contains antibodies to protect the newborn against disease. My pastor was smart. He started me off on the milk of the word. He made me memorize verses like First uh, John 3.16, and other verses that Christians often learn when they're starting out. 
And it was through them that I received the colostrum of the word of God and learned about the fact that God loved the whole world and that included me. And growing in Christ, we need to know that we are indeed loved by God. And next he encouraged me to read the Psalms and a gospel. So it was scripture was the food that fed my growth in Christ as an infant in Christ and now um, even today still in there still studying it's like you study and go oh I didn't know that before I mean scripture is the colostrum that kept me growing in Christ and it'll keep you growing in Christ too it'll protect you and me from subjective feelings about Christ and about spirituality and it gives them an objective basis a place to stand or to start growing in Christ now <clears throat> my experience on journeys is that it's more fun to go with companions how many of you have traveled like overseas with a couple of people how many have traveled alone yeah it's more fun to be with others just is well, my growth in Christ from infancy towards adolescence came with a friend, a very strong Christian. He helped me when I struggled with faith and with life issues. He helped me to move forward in the grace of Christ. Otherwise, I might have slid away into the shadowy bylands of life. He kept pointing me to Jesus. <clears throat> he prayed for me and, and with me. And my initial baby steps in prayer happened with him and his encouragement. Now, some of you may have experienced the support of a person or a couple of persons in your life with Christ and in your sense of growing in Christ. Now, there are many places here at this place where you can grow in Christ. So I know many of you probably don't read the inside of a book you only look at the cover first page the preface and go I'm not going to read anymore I'd like you to open up because I want you to see there are many things in here for you so that you can grow in Christ in fact one of the things Tice leads on Saturday morning the men's Bible study group and it isn't a bad hour it starts at 8 o'clock in the morning <laughs> starts at 8 o'clock in the morning. Who isn't up at 8 in the morning? Don't raise your hands. I don't want to know. <laughs> but there are lots of other things here. They're there to help you grow in your life with Christ. Now, as I grew, I learned that others in the past had made the journey Every journey needs a guide. I mean, the first groups I took overseas, we had wonderful guides to help us get oriented and to really see things and not miss them. Now, I discovered women and men who had made the journey with Christ. And they became my spiritual guides at the very beginning. <clears throat> and one of them actually started just before I became a Christian. The retreat I was on, they were reading during the meals this book, Through Gates of Splendor. Any of you read this? It's the story of five missionaries who went to Ecuador and were martyred by the Quechua Indians. And Elizabeth Elliot writes the story, and her husband was one of those who was martyred. And uh, they were reading this, and, re and I'm on this retreat, and I'm not a Christian. I'm hearing these words unbelievable stories of these guys and their journey with Christ and then what happened to them and up on the screen you'll see one of the quotes one of his famous quotes from Jim Elliot he is no fool who gives what he cannot keep to gain what he cannot lose you're going to lose lots of things that you have right now in life. But if you have Christ, that will never be lost. That's what he's saying. I mean, growing in Christ starts with that assurance that when you know him, you've got the greatest gain in the whole world. 
<clears throat> and then he wrote in another place, I couldn't have asked for more than God in his deliberate grace was surpri has surprised me with. I mean, there's a lot that goes on in our life that's a surprise that God just gives us. But it helps us grow. Another book that um, affected me greatly was a book called Hudson Taylor's Spiritual Secrets. Any of you ever seen that? You have to be as old as I am probably to have heard of him. He was actually the founder of China Inland Mission. And he grew up in England, and when he became a Christian, he began to spend time in prayer, asking for God to give him direction every day because he was working in various shops in his village. <clears throat> and uh, what I learned from him was uh, this whole experience of talking with God and the fact that God answered his prayers. So he goes off to China, has no financial support except prayer. And God provides all of his needs. And pretty soon he has thousands of missionaries that are dependent on prayer. So he became an important person to be in terms of trusting God in prayer and seeing that God really hears and answers prayer. I mean, when you have that confidence that God hears and answers, you will pray more. You'll grow in that area. So here's what he writes in one place. <clears throat> Do not have your concert first and then, turn, uh, then tune your instrument. Afterwards, begin the day with the word of God and prayer and get first of all in harmony with him. That's how to begin the day. Well, if you want to learn about how to handle the temptations and struggles that come in your life, here the book that has helped me the most is C.S. Lewis's Screwtape Letters. How many of you have read it? A bunch of you. And <clears throat> this is a wonderful help. And I, I tell people, you don't want to read the whole thing at one sitting. There are 31 letters in here. I think he, they were actually written week by week. And I think you should read them one at a time. <laughs> read one, take a break. Because they will help you. Now, one of the first things he notices is about us when we first sort of get connected with Christ. He says this, all the habits of the patient, both mental and bodily, are still in our favor. Remember, this is the demon writing to a lower class demon. And it's true. We have habits that are in there. That as we grow in Christ, Christ deals with them. But if we're sort of cagey about not really acknowledging our struggles and what, what we are or were, um, it's hard to grow in Christ. That's why I say his letters are pretty helpful. And then this one I love. It has a larger context, which I'll tell you in a second. Work hard on the disappointment or anticlimax, which is certainly coming to the patient. That's us, or the patient. During his first few weeks as a churchman. And if you've read that letter, you know that the disappointment is us. Look at the people around you. And he says, that'll discourage any belief that you have. So take a look at the people around you. I want you to be encouraged. <laughs> Come on, Presbyterians, you can look around. <clears throat> okay, there are three takeaways from this message for you this morning. The first one is... Growing in Christ is essential, not optional, for Christian disciples. Second, growing in Christ is a journey, process, not an event. And third, growing in Christ is God's work, but requires my participation. Let us pray. God, thank you for this word. Thank you for 
sisters and brothers who have gone before us and shown us uh, what you do and can do in the life of one who is committed to following and growing in you. So I pray that you would help us be those who are growing in Christ. We pray in your name. Amen.